Welcome to the next video in the past paper practice series. We're going to have a look at how you can structure your responses to different question styles and things that you need to be thinking about so that you can hit all of the marks available. Now, the first thing I want to focus on in this video is command words. Practicing how to answer your questions based on the command word that the exam board has provided is kind of like a hack to scoring an A or an A star grade when it comes to A level science. As you get to know these command words, both with this video and by practicing past paper questions, you can start to build a formula for how you structure your responses to each exam question. On screen now, you will see tables of command words that AQA and OCR use in their A-level science exam papers. This is information that the exam boards themselves have provided, so if you want to go and have a look at that on their website, you can do. But a fantastic resource that you should use, even if you aren't on OCR, is the OCR's booklet on command words and exactly what they mean. This is super detailed and gives examples of how the command words might be applied to questions in the exam and gives you sample answers in response to these command words. It's a fantastic document. Please do take some time to read through it. OCR also have a skills guide. This was made in 2015, but I think that because a lot of the key skills in the course have remained the same, it's still relevant and you should definitely have a look through it. Again, it gives amazing detail on lots of different exams skills that you need to develop. For Edexcel, I couldn't find any specific documentation about their command words, but they're probably going to be very similar, if not the same, as the AQA and OCR provided material. By doing loads of past papers as well, you start to gain a familiarity with the command words that regularly come up in each paper. So you can enhance your knowledge that way just by doing loads and loads of past papers and looking at mark schemes. But if you can get a grip on command words, it is such a useful tool. I really wish that I did it when I was doing my A-levels. When they're listed out in the tables like this, they look like a lot to remember. And to be honest, I don't think that you should commit any of this to memory. Use this as a tool if you find that you can't understand why certain marks are given in the way that they are given. Or if there's a certain command word that you always stumble on, then use this as a guideline, but don't take time to remember it. You've got plenty of other things that you need to remember. So when you approach an exam question, you want to read it properly and take note of how many marks are available. This indicates to you how much detail you should go into in your response. The command word used as well also indicates the kind of detail that you need to go into. You'll notice that certain words are used consistently when there are essay questions or those that ask you to give a much longer response, so anything above two marks. Talking of essay questions in A-level science, your quality of written response is assessed whether it's five marker question or a 25 marker question. These longer questions demand a huge variety of skills, but they are a great opportunity to show off just how much preparation you've put into doing your exam. So when tackling these questions, the first thing you want to do is read the answer carefully and then highlight the command word and key information provided if there was any. Next, take a few minutes to plan your response. Use bullet points to structure the ideas and details that you're going to give in your response. So one thing that you need to remember for these questions is that each key point that you want to talk about should have its own paragraph or sentence depending on how long the question is that you're answering. Key points have some dependence on the command word that was used, so if you're asked to argue something, then you need to give key points for and against. If you're asked to describe a certain process, for example, um, a methodology for an experiment, then you need to make sure that each key point is a part of that experiment and it's in the right order. Before you write your response, just have a look at your plan and do a quick check. Ask yourself, do each of my key points answer the question and are they structured coherently? As long as you ask yourself that before writing your response, you're going to save time um, and potentially save making some pretty serious mistakes. Make sure that there's a link between each of your points and that there's a logical flow from one point to the next. For longer answers you might want to employ the familiar structure of point evidence explain. In those biology 25 markers you might want to do a brief introduction and then round off your answer with a brief conclusion. Keep these short because the bulk of the marks will be available for the content of your response not the way that you've structured it. Don't waffle or write anything that isn't directly related to answering the question. This saves time and it shows that you're able to give a good quality written response. It's so important that every single point you make is answering the question. So if you have a little bit 
of uncertainty about whether a point you've made is doing that, then just cut it out and save yourself the time that you're going to take up writing about something that won't get any marks. Part of the marking criteria for written answers is spelling, punctuation and grammar. Check that your handwriting is neat and that anybody can read it and that you're using grammar correctly. Using scientific terms is always a good idea, it shows a strong technical knowledge of your subject, but if you use it incorrectly then that is going to lose you marks. Part of preparing for these longer answers is having a good grip on key scientific terms, so make sure you've got those absolutely nailed down as well. If you make a mistake on your response just simply draw a single line through it and carry on further down, you can always get spare paper in the real exam. This isn't key for your past paper practice but I do think it's really good to build a habit of doing all of these things that you should be doing in the real exam in your spare time. It will just be automatic when it comes to the summer exams. Much nicer than the essay questions are the multiple choice questions. You should find these quite straightforward and my number one tip for multiple choice questions is just to make sure you've put an answer in even if you're not sure what the real answer is there's always a chance that you're gonna select the right answer, so it doesn't make any sense to leave it blank. I would also say don't get lulled into a false sense of security with multiple choice. Because they are nicer questions, I think some people whiz through them and make simple mistakes and therefore lose out on marks here and there. Make sure that you have a look at each possible answer that's been provided, just in case you make a simple error or misread the answer or the question and select the wrong response. So if you're pretty sure that the first option is correct, still go through and read the others and consider them before putting pen to paper. You might have been wrong first time, so just make sure that you're doing that each multiple choice question. There's also a possibility that you might need to do some working out to find the answer to your multiple choice question. Typically in this part of the exam paper there will be lots of space, so just use that but make sure that you don't scribble into any of the answer boxes. Keep the whole tick box area clear so the examiner can see exactly what you've chosen as your answer. So some other questions that you will come across in your past paper practice are ones that ask you to draw something or to give some detailed working out. You could be asked to draw apparatus setups. This is particularly important if you are doing chemistry and especially important if you are doing physics. Check that you know exactly what sort of thing you might be asked to draw by going through your spec. For all A-level sciences, make sure that you're practicing drawing standard lab equipment. Marks can be lost due to unclear drawings or incorrect drawings. So here are some rules that you should stick to. The first is to draw in 2D, not 3D. You want to draw cross sections of the equipment on screen now are the 2D drawings of standard lab equipment that you need to note down and copy in your exam should you need to draw an apparatus setup. Next, draw with a sharp pencil and make sure that you fill the available space. Typically you will get a full side of exam paper or half a side. Whatever space you have, make sure that you fill it with your diagram. You should plan roughly where things are going to sit before committing to using a sharp pencil just because sharp pencils are quite difficult to erase if you make any mistakes. Next, you want to be using a ruler to draw all straight lines, don't go freehand and also draw each label horizontally rather than at weird angles. Make sure you label every piece of equipment in the diagram too. Scientific drawings are designed to give a clear example of what the apparatus setup should look like. So you want to give detail in your labels as well as having them be as clear as possible. Curved lines and circles should be made with compasses. Again, this is because it just looks so much better than freehand drawing and it is the correct way to do technical drawing. You should have done some practice of this style of drawing in your classes but if you have any questions then just ask your teacher or do a quick google search on how to draw out scientific equipment because there is a convention when it comes to doing this type of drawing. In addition to drawing some questions will also require you to do some calculations that might take up quite a lot of space. When doing a long piece of working out you need to be equally as clear in your drawings and your written responses as to how you are progressing through answering the question. The examiner needs to see your method and your final answer to be able to give you all of the marks available. A general rule of thumb is to use a new line per calculation and to write neatly. Don't use any crazy symbols or symbols that only you know and don't scatter your working out within the available space. If the examiner can't follow how you got from one stage of the calculation to the next, they can't award you the marks even if the correct answer is written in front of them. And finally, make your final answer super duper clear. Usually there will be an answer line at the bottom of the page, so make sure you don't kind of spill your working out over into that space. If you make any mistakes in your working out, just draw one neat line through it and continue below it. Don't scribble anything out, that makes it 10 times worse. 
Knowing your stuff is obviously important when it comes to exam papers, but being able to present your answers in a structured and clear way is how you are gonna get those higher marks. Make sure that you've covered everything that we've detailed in this video in your past paper practice. In the next video, we're going to talk about using your mark scheme and examiner's reports to get the most from your past paper practice. Don't forget to subscribe to Snap Revise if you aren't already, you can do that just here, and have a look at some of our other videos that help you through your A-level and GCSE revision just here.